61 kilowatt hours on a single pallet. So this is the first temperature controlled high voltage battery on the channel and it's connected or paired with a Solarc 60K which is 480 volt industrial three phase which is pretty unusable for most of the people watching this channel. But the output is insane, I just had to have it. But there's lots of problems, so get this. The temperature controlled features and all of the fire extinguishers, all of this runs off of 240 volts, which is not what this inverter outputs. So they give you this small transformer that's rated for 3000 watts, and it takes the three phase 480 volts and steps it down to 240 volts single phase, so you can run all this stuff inside the battery box. Now this battery is pretty crazy, let me show you inside. Now first off, this is a high voltage battery, so all these modules are going to be connected in series. And to connect them to the Solarc inverter, these are the cables that are going to do it. And look at how small these are. Because it's high voltage and the current is low, we can use small cables. And we'll connect this first before we connect these in series, because this is super dangerous. Now this is a heat pump. It's an air conditioner for the summertime. And on this side is the condenser coil and this is the evaporator coil. And then there's a vent for the cold air up here and it flows into this ductwork right here. And then it goes through all of the batteries and you'll notice that each battery has a cooling fan. And this cooling system allows it to work in any environment possible. Next we have a carbon monoxide detector, a smoke detector, and a heat detector. Then over here is the fire extinguisher. Also, there's water sprinklers if you have water lines that you can connect. So if there was a fire, there's multiple ways for it to handle it. Also, there's an evacuation fan and there's one on top and one on bottom. So what this does is if one of these batteries were to vent gases that are flammable, instead of them accumulating, which can create an explosion risk, this will evacuate all that air rapidly. Now the batteries are connected with communication cables and we have a main on and off switch. And then this is how we turn it on at the very end. Because this is high voltage, there's lots of safety stuff going on because this voltage could instantly kill you. Now let me show you the inside of the inverter. So over here is where we connect the grid and this is three phase 480 volts. And then over here is where we connect our loads three phase 480 volts. But notice how small the battery connection terminals are. Usually the battery connection is large like this, but because we're using a high voltage battery, they're super small. And then over here we have our MPPT where we connect our solar panels. Now this inverter outputs 60,000 watts, which is absolutely insane, especially considering the weight, it's under 200 pounds. And that's because we have a high voltage system. If we had a 48 volt battery, we could not make the inverter this small. We would have to handle a lot more current and we'd have a much larger device. So fast forward a week later and the system is running. Because this is high voltage DC, I turned off the camera so I could focus. You cannot make a mistake when you're setting up a system like this. For example, the solar string is almost 1000 volts DC. And I did it with all of these solar panels, 24 in series. Wiring up the battery was very simple, but you have to do it in the right order. And under this cover is 600 volts DC. And this is 240 volts single phase AC. So you wire everything up and then you attach this thing and then you turn it on and then you step away. Next, the inverter turned on and because it had solar, it started charging the battery and it worked on the first try with communication. I didn't have to set anything up. And I connected this transformer and a forklift battery charger and it all fired up and worked on the first go. But this is not stress testing the system. This battery can output 60,000 watts and so can the inverter. So I ordered some 480 volt loads and we're gonna try them out. Now we can actually test this system. This is a 30,000 watt heater and a second 30,000 watt heater. But the battery cabinet has an air conditioner and that draws a couple thousand watts, especially if we're pulling at max output. So let's load this system up and see what happens. First, we need to turn on the battery. Once this is installed, we can use the switch. Now we have power. Next, we turn on the inverter. Transformer's on. 
and solar is disconnected and the battery is full. We're at 100%. And now the air conditioner is running. Now the moment of truth, let's turn them on. We got an overload. So it was beeping, it just restarted, but we're gonna disconnect the air conditioner and see if it helps. Now the air conditioner is disabled. Whoa. That's a scary noise. And we're pulling 60.9 kilowatts from the battery. Oh, it didn't work. I guess we're gonna have to lower the output of one of the heaters. On the data sheet, it can do 90,000 watts for 10 seconds, so it should be able to start these things up. We'll set this to medium. Oh, and it overloaded again. Now I set one of the heaters to low, so maybe it will work now. Now it's only pulling 29 kilowatts, that's nothing. I'm gonna try to raise it a little more. 58, so there's only one setting on there. It's either heater on or heater off. But they make it seem like you have low heat and high heat, but that's false. It's either on or off. Oh, dang it. Maybe the inverter's getting hot. That sounds bad. Yeah, that startup is not what you want a motor to sound like when you're running it with an off-grid inverter. Let's add solar, it's a solar arc. Whenever you have solar connected, these can output more. Oh, it's winter, so we're only pulling 5,000 watts from the solar, and we're pulling 30,000 watts from the loads. So let's see if it can do this. If it can't pull 25 kilowatts from the battery cabinet, there's something wrong. That glare is awful. They need a different screen or something. And this time it's actually powering it. Let's add the second heater. And this is perfect with solar, both of them are under 60. So it should run this just fine. <laughs> no! Really? It can't do it? All right, let's see what the error is. Battery over current. And look it, we've had all of these and no AC overloads for a while now. Yep, it's the battery. What a bummer. Fast forward to the end of the day and I worked with an engineer and we found some settings that were wrong. This thing's expecting the grid. So all the settings were set up for that. It wasn't in off-grid mode. And also the current was limited on the battery. So I changed all the settings. It took me a while, but we're gonna do the first test and we're gonna fire it up and see what happens. Whew, that was way better. That's nice. Okay, now let's try them at the same time because they were making a weird noise before. Uh-oh. I don't know what that is. It should handle the surge. But if we turn them on one at a time. Nope, got a little noise. Let's see if it can run it. I was working on these all morning and nothing would fix them. I changed a couple settings and it actually works now. The battery current was limited to 20 amps. Now it's pulling 100 amps. I'm surprised these even started before. They had practically no output. And one of the limit functions was an 80% state of charge, which is where I stopped my test because it was limited even more than that. It's actually pretty warm in here. I'm starting to sweat. Most inverters do not have this issue. If you connect a load, it will just run it at maximum output, but not with the Solark. This is the same as having 40 heat guns on at the same time. Now, unfortunately, it didn't go to zero. I can only discharge in off-grid mode to 10% state of charge. And that's a good amount of capacity. That's six kilowatt hours. So if you go to limiter, you'll notice 10%, 10% all the way down. And I can't reduce this to zero. That's unfortunate. 
but it's actually working and it can run the load now. Now it's gonna be about a day and a half to charge this thing back up to 100%. Now for the next test, it should be more strenuous. 42,000 watt motor and it's gonna be massive. So that will be in a few weeks and I'll make a new video on that. I hope this video wasn't boring. It's a new type of system for me and it's my first Solark and I never worked with 480 volts before, but we got it to work, which is awesome. I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.